Any plea at the beginning of a film is usually a red flag. Snake Eyes is another unnecessary sequel like those in my previous video, don't forget to check that out, this time continuing the totally successful G.I. Joe series. Now we can finally get the answers no one was desperate for and find out how the cool, stoic, badass Snake Eyes became who he is. That is, if he didn't bumble his way through this adventure like a paraplegic figure skater. Snake Eyes seeks revenge on the man who murdered his father. To accomplish this, he joins the Yakuza like any normal person would. He then travels to Japan to learn the ways of plot armor and how to harness his inner lack of charisma. When audiences want to see a hero train, they don't want to see the hero trading bowls of water. You really don't get to see how he became a skilled combatant. There's a scene where he's an underground fighter, but he gets his ass kicked most of it and basically lucks out at the end, otherwise you could have swept up what was left of him into a sandwich bag. And he almost never uses a sword until the end of the film when he's suddenly better with it than Tom Cruise in The Last Samurai. Christ, I thought you wanted me to like this character, instead you just spewed out another ray. And he makes choices that baffle me, like some morons on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. For example, why not tell Storm Shadow what the hell is happening back at the castle? How about, if you're supposed to be a ninja, why do you constantly take your hood off before sneaking around? Oh, I have another one. Who asked for this? Snake Eyes is really bad. The action is boring and horribly choreographed with Hunger Games shaky cam. People with guns run into people with swords like they have an impalement fetish. And Cross Eyes was probably pumped out due to a contractual obligation after the actor touched his toes on the casting couch. Next, we have Jungle Cruise. A new attempt by Disney to turn one of their rides powered by the souls of orphans into another multi-billion dollar franchise like Pirates of the Caribbean. While also pretending pretty much none of the other ones happened. This time, Emily Blunt is an adventure adventurous explorer a la Indiana Jones. She's traveled to the Amazon to find the Tears of the Moon, a flower said to be able to cure any illness. Along the way, the rock makes a lot of puns and they must battle cursed conquistadors. Still don't understand that last part. You see, unlike the crew of the Black Pearl, these conquistadors are bestowed with power over the Amazon controlling vines, snakes, and bees? I would hardly call them cursed. Also, why is the one other conquistador not empowered like the others? Really could have come in handy if he was written consistently. Besides this issue, the film does have decent setups. Many of my questions and complaints were answered after a rather large reveal, although more issues arose from the aforementioned curse that rustled my jimmies like a back alley dentist. The comedy is also a mixed bag of hard-hitting quick jokes with a plethora of puns and a sprinkle of run-on humor. And while I enjoy Enjoy puns, many of the jokes did get laughs too. There are a lot of ideas, but it just seems that they didn't know how to handle it, so it just falls apart like a clown juggling chainsaws. Jungle Cruise did make me giggle, and that's about as high a praise as I can give it. The chemistry between The Rock and Emily Blunt is good, but too many elements clash and don't align like trying to force a star peg into a triangle hole. Now, thanks for watching. Please, like, share, and if you want to watch more movie reviews, check out my review of both Space Jam 2 and Escape Room 2 here, and I'll see you in the next video.